Okay, TS Power, 9K, half an ohm dynamic burst. Sometimes I wonder myself why I do this, but um, I do it for you guys. So let's see if it handles it or if it goes up in smoke. I'm not sure what's gonna happen. Are you looking for a powerful subwoofer amplifier, but your budget says, I can't afford a name brand. Let's check out what we have today. Big shout out to my friend Mo from Canada who told me about this one, the TS Power 9000 watt monoblock amplifier for $150. We definitely have to take a closer look at this. If you guys like the way I uncover these mysteries of these amplifiers, make sure you smash me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you like this content, and leave a comment below about what other amps you like to see tested. Designed and engineered in the United States of America, made in the People's Republic of China, the TS1.9000D. It says TS Power, but it's really NESA. And who is NESA? I don't know. Maybe China's version of NASA. I have no idea. Here is the card that you can put your information on and sell it to all the marketers in the world. We also have an instruction manual which covers several different models, including the Big Daddy, which is the one we have, the TS1.9000D. We'll get into the specs here in just a little bit. Let's take all the goodies out and see what's in the box. Here we have four mounting screws and Allen single key. He shared one with us. We also have a remote base cable attached to the world's cheapest base remote. Yeah, we've seen this before in other inexpensive amplifiers. It's really the cheapest of the cheap with the 3.5 millimeter connection there to the amp. Speaking of the amp, let's get it unwrapped and take a closer look. It does kind of look like a Alpine from previous generations. Lifting it up, you can tell it's a little bit lighter than an amplifier usually would be, meaning the heat sink is not very thick. It does have plastic end caps on the end. But here we'll take a closer look. As you can see, the TS1.9000D will do a flyover. So you can see it in all of its glory. It has a few things on the amp, including Encore. Not sure if that's maybe the version. Also the TS Power, and under that is the LED, which shows the power. And then we have all this max power crap and the model number. On each end, it does have these plastic end caps and two Allen screws, which we have to remove. So let's do that real quick so we can take a closer look at the amp. Here on one end of the amp where we have the speaker connections as well as the power and ground, you will have to remove the plastic end panel to be able to get to this, including the speaker outputs, which are eight gauge. There's two separate outputs. This is a monoblock amp, but that makes it easier for hooking up multiple subwoofers or a dual voice coil subwoofer. We also have zero gauge connections for your power and ground, as well as the remote terminal there. And the power and ground are separated, so you can use dual inputs if you like, which is nice. On the opposite end, we have a protect LED. We have the remote socket for the base knob, that 3.5 millimeter we were talking about. Also, we have RCA inputs. This amp is linkable, so we have the bridge in and bridge out RCAs so that you can hook up multiples of these and strap them. On this ultra budget amp, it's shocking to see metal potentiometers, including gain, low pass filter, variable subsonic, variable bass boost frequency, also in variable bass boost. It's always important to check these settings and make sure they're set right. The subsonic filter was set all the way up and the bass boost was set all the way up. So you want to check all that before you hook up your amp. Now, as far as dimensions go, 20.6 inches for the length, 8.4 inches for the width and 2.3 inches for the height. As for ratings, it's not rated at four ohms. At two ohms, 1500 watts, one ohm, 3000 watts, max power, 9000 watts. This is a class D monoblock base subwoofer amplifier and here on the top you can see the power led is pretty cool it's a little strip there of blue led we have the amp all hooked up to the amplifier dyno so let's fire it up so that we can try out the test here to find out how much true power this amplifier makes on the left you'll see the power output in watts in the middle the ohm load on the right the voltage of the dyno will also have the remote clamp indicator connected so that we can calculate the amplifier's efficiency. All right, let's do this. First test up on this $150 budget subwoofer amplifier, we'll try four ohms. It is not rated at four ohms in the manual. Let's see if we get certified to 1% distortion using the 40 hertz track. We get 902 watts, 14.6. So we're looking good thus far. Uncertified to clipping. Again, 40 hertz track here. Let's see what we get. Uh, right exactly the same, 902 at 14.6. 
What about dynamically? We send the pulse tone of 40 hertz into the amplifier. See what we get here. Just a little bit more power. 937, nope, 949 at 14.72. Next up, we'll try two ohms. Now it is rated 1500 watts at two ohms at 14.4 volts. Doesn't give frequency, doesn't tell you what their specifications were, but it does say 1500. Let's try it here. And yes, at 1% distortion, we got 1545 watts right at 14.46. So we're cheering about this one because it actually did its rated power. And let's try uncertified up to clipping. We get a little bit more 1563 right at 14.42. What about dynamically? Does it have any dynamic headroom? Our voltage is gonna be a slightly higher here because of the lithium recharges quickly. You can see here, 1760 watts at 14.66. Now we're looking good, but at one ohm it's rated 3000 watts at 14.4. So let's see here, certified test first up to 1% distortion. And here we go, oh. 1945, it jumped up to 1992 right at the end. So we're well shy, about a thousand watts shy of that 3000 watts. But what about to clipping? Cause you know, subwoofer amplifiers, 1% distortion doesn't really matter. Let's try it up to clipping. 2400 watts at 14.14, but we're still 600 watts or so shy of that 3000 that's rated. But what about dynamically? But here you go. Maybe they rated it dynamically at one ohm. I don't know, but we got 3072 at 14.56, so it actually did its power dynamically. Here are all the results we just showed in the amp. Pretty much did its rated power at two ohms, but one ohm it fell shy except for the dynamic test. Now, if you're interested in seeing lower than one ohm tests, yes, we're gonna brutalize this amp. Make sure you stick around to the very end of the video. We'll show you all those tests. Next up, we're gonna try do a bump to segment with the Savard 8 inch high Q subwoofers. Now, unfortunately, my audio got messed up during this segment, so I'm not going to make you suffer through that. However, you will be able to see the subwoofers flex. And yes, this amplifier was pushing these 8 inch high Q subwoofers by Savard very nicely during this example here. And I played with them for quite a while. It didn't have any issues with the sound quality, it uh, had no con issues with control over the subs. They sounded great. I'd like to thank Savard Speaker Systems for being our subwoofer sponsor. And today we're showing off the HiQ Sub, the 8 inch HiQ Sub. Check a link in the video description so you can save 7% off using the code WOW7. Now, I have used these HiQ 8s for over five years, including this really cool box I had built. But yeah, I did an unboxing. I showed these off, showed them flex. And they're really incredible subwoofers. And that's why I decided to go with Savard for sponsoring because they really make great products. Check the link in the video description to see this high Q eight inch sub. They recently introduced some boxes as well. So you can get a bundle with subs and boxes, a standard box or one that has acrylic in it. And I'm gonna show one of these off very soon in an upcoming video. But what if you're a DIYer and don't want a pre-built box? That's okay. They provide enclosure designs as well. So contact them with all your general questions and they'll help you with a box design. Thanks again to Savard Speaker Systems for sponsoring this segment. Make sure you check links in the video description. Now on to the amp guts. Find out what's inside of this beefy $150 amp. And yes, if it's not $150 at the time you watch this, I'm sorry, but it was at the time I purchased it. Take off the eight screws, pull off the bottom panel and bam, check this out. Beef for sure. Now I did get some thermals on this one and I let it run actually on the dyno just playing music for a little while just so it would heat up and I didn't see any abnormal uh, heating here and the hottest parts you know were 80 degrees Fahrenheit or so not bad at all and generally the layout here is a typical half bridge Korean style class D monoblock amplifier. On the power supply side we have 25 volt 2200 microfarad capacitors and for the rails 100 volt 2200 microfarad, those are 105 degrees Celsius, but brand is full cap. And then we got this gangster lean going on here with this driver card so that the bottom panel can actually fit on the amp. Thanks, Big D. This is Dick Riculous. D <laughs> I'm not a smart man. Now, if you are an amp gut aficionado, you may have noticed this design or something very similar to this because it is kind of a standard design for 2,000 to 2,500 watt amps, including the Audio Apex Cab 22 
very similar to this one. There's a few differences in some of the cap layouts, but overall pretty close. Next up, let's talk about pros and cons of this amplifier. First up, the good stuff, value per watt is hard to beat. It does meet rated power, kinda. Has a variable subsonic, a variable bass boost and frequency. They are linkable, strappable. Is it low ohm stable? We shall find out if you watch all the way to the end of the video. So make sure you watch all the way to the end. Things that could be better, uses standard RCAs, has a cheapo based remote with a 3.5 millimeter connection. The plastic end caps, I'm not a fan of. Also not a fan of the 9,000 watts they promise on the box and the listing on Amazon. Warranty and support. You're taking your chances here, friends. After 30 days, who knows? You might want to get a Cab 22 or get a different brand if you want better support. But hey, if you got 150 bucks, you want to be slapping and you're willing to take a chance, man, it's tough to beat this amp for the power, for the performance, for the value. This thing kicks some butt. So thanks as always for watching. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you like this content. Thanks to my Patreon supporters, patreon.com slash old school stereo. Another shout out to Savard for sponsoring. Thanks, Big D. I'm out of here. As promised, we're going to drop those ohms low. Find out what this amp can handle. We'll try certified at 0.8. Again, it kind of jumped around a little bit. Doesn't really like certified mode at one ohm or less uncertified to clipping at 0.8 let's see if we can do better than that 2400 yeah we get 2600 and 26 watts at 14.18 what about dynamic burst at 0.8 definitely has some juice here <laughs> we're over 3000 easily 3433 watts right at 14.29 next up we'll try the 0.67 test we're not doing certified we're just doing uncertified and dynamic Uncertified up to clipping 40 hertz. We got 2798, so almost 2800 watts right at 14 volts. Again, we're pulling over 300 amps of current too, so make sure you have electrical to support this. Dynamically, 0.67, over 4000 watts. Yes. Now we're going to do the half an ohm test too, but I'm going to walk you through the segment as I did it. So here we go. Okay, TS power, 9K, half an ohm dynamic burst. Sometimes I wonder myself why I do this, but um, I do it for you guys. So let's see if it handles it or if it goes up in smoke. I'm not sure what's gonna happen. Okay, it handled it, did the entire test right at 5,000 watts, 4940, 14.3, no protect. The blue light is still on the amp, I'll show you. Blue light is still on, it is powered up. We do have dual inputs going in. We do have the lithium bank down here powering it, so got plenty of juice. But uh, yeah, it did it dynamically.